जमाने ने लाखों सितम मुझ पे ढाए इन रूरल इंडिया Invisible women rise with the sun. They break their backs in rice paddies, rock quarries, brick factories, even their own homes. They are invisible, unnoticed, and yet they are right there in front of us. 360 million women and girls in Indian villages struggling to survive. It's a struggle that begins before birth. In some areas there are only 7 women for every 10 men. The tragic results of selective abortion and female infanticide. Those that do survive will not be greeted with delight. You are 10 times more likely to die in childhood in India than in America. Girls are a financial burden. Tradition demands that parents pay a huge dowry for their daughters to marry, a payment which can drown a family in debt. She will live a life of hardship and neglect. Her worth will come from bearing sons. but her blessing might also be a curse more women die during pregnancy and childbirth in india than in any other nation in the world rural women have little access to health care many go their entire lives without ever seeing a doctor many village girls never set foot inside a school parents consider the education of their daughters a waste of money Girls are expected to work, then marry young, and start a family. Forty-three percent of girls in India are married by the time they are 18. Illiteracy is passed down from one generation to the next. Two hundred million, nearly half of India's women, cannot read or write, not even their own names. They are powerless to change their lives. or to improve the lives of their children. This was Meena Ben's world. The only life she ever knew. Meena Ben got married at 16. She never attended school. Her husband, Karsan Bai, was a military man. For 10 months out of the year, he was stationed on the India-Pakistan border, hundreds of miles from their home in Gujarat. At $250 a month, Carson Bai's salary was generous, but numbers were meaningless squiggles to Meena Ben, and she couldn't keep track of their money. Alone for most of the year, Meena Ben struggled to raise their two children and manage the family finances. She couldn't read the signs in the market, and dishonest merchants took advantage of her ignorance. The family lived in a tiny mud hut, constantly struggling to make ends meet. Unable to write, Meena Ben couldn't even exchange letters with her husband. She had no way to communicate with him. She felt abandoned and depressed. She prayed to her childhood gods and offered sacrifices to Hindu idols. She began to lose hope until she met Sangeeta. Sangeeta was starting an adult literacy class in Meena Ben's village. She invited Meena Ben to join the nightly course. Meena Ben was an eager student. She quickly learned how to read and write in her native language. She was educated about health care and ways to generate extra income. And she was surprised to discover she had a gift for numbers. Meena Ben and Sangeeta became close friends. The young wife and mother was impressed with her new friend's quiet, steady faith, longing to enjoy the same sense of contentment and joy. Meena Ben accepted Jesus as her savior. When he returned home on his next leave, Carson Bai was startled to find a completely transformed wife. 
I told my husband that we were not raised in the right manner and we need to live our lives properly. With a confidence she had never shown before, Minaben told him everything that had happened. Her friendship with Sangeeta, her new literacy skills, and her decision to follow Jesus. She also said she enrolled their sons in a Christian boarding school. Minaben gave her husband a New Testament. Carson by read it from cover to cover while stationed at his post. A short time later, the husband and wife were baptized together. Minaben's new literacy skills have led to tremendous change in her life. She keeps in touch with her husband and children through frequent letter writing. She can tell time, so it's easier to manage her day. She devotes time each morning and evening to Bible study and prayer. She reads bus signs and travels easily to nearby villages. She's no longer a victim of cheating vendors in the marketplace. She manages the finances wisely and is overseeing the construction of a new brick home for the family. She even has her own ATM card. When she visits the bank, Minabin says, illiterate customers now ask her for help filling out their papers. Minabin says that knowing Jesus gives her peace in her heart. Her favorite passages in the Bible are about the birth of Christ because it happened in a world so similar to hers. Minabin isn't invisible anymore. She has reached out to other women in her village, telling them about the classes that freed her from the chains of illiteracy and the Savior who freed her from spiritual slavery. She also helped form a savings group in her village. A dozen women each contribute between 50 cents and $2 per month. The account balance has already grown to $300. The funds are used to make small, short-term loans available to families in the village. I no longer fear my future because literacy has improved my life. I know that I can always pray to Jesus and that he will always answer my prayers. I am grateful to God for all that he has done for me in my life. In India, there is an old saying, when you teach a man, you are teaching an individual. When you teach a woman, you teach the whole community. The Holy Spirit is opening doors across India, reaching even the most isolated villages through society's invisible and unnoticed women. Nearly half a million illiterates have already learned to read and write through Mission India's literacy program. Imagine the impact of 200 million more women unnoticed, just like Minabin, receiving the gift of literacy and finding joy in Jesus, sharing these gifts with their families and their neighbors. Entire communities will be transformed, even their whole nation. And then the world will notice.